Hi everyone, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome to a quick painting, a quick composition painting. Now as an artist and as a teacher, and I've been a teacher for 35 years, I teach all different kinds of techniques and drills, what we call it, for you to practice your, your techniques and to become a better artist. And we all need to practice. A lot of people like to take one painting and just refine it and refine it and refine it, sometimes working a couple of weeks on a painting until they get that painting exactly the way they do, or exactly the way they want that painting to, uh, to go. I do that, but I don't always do that. I f have found over 35 years of painting that I get better through repetition. And most people learn through repetition. Okay, and it's just doing those techniques, those drills over and over and over again. And so what we do is we do a lot of what we call the 30 minute or quick compositional paintings. And that's what I, I like to do. Here's a, a couple examples of it. These are little eight by 10 boards. This is just a, um, a little uh, Super MDF board. They're very inexpensive to get. And I cut them in eight by 10 because I can buy eight by 10 frames for them really reasonably. And a painting like this, I like to spend no more than 30 minutes to an hour on. I like to, you know, practice different kinds of color combinations here and different types of, uh, you know, warm. It allows me to practice my warms, my cools, my shape, my light source, varying the colors. It allows me to practice and, and, you know, some different types of color schemes that I might not use before. So the 30 minute composition is great for that. In 30 minutes, you'll run through all of the, the techniques that you're going to be using that you might do over, you know, several weeks in, de in developing or refining a, a painting. So it causes you to repeat quite a bit faster, okay? Now, I have an entire set of uh, books that are that do nothing but describe different types of techniques that I use for quick compositions because they make beautiful little paintings. You take these little paintings like this, they're beautiful. And if you, you take a frame, that they look absolutely gorgeous. You drop a little frame on them and you have a... Uh, you know, a finished painting. And this is, these are just little eight by 10 frames you can buy at any store and it makes a beautiful little compositional painting. So not only do you, uh, you know, get a beautiful painting in the end of this, but you get to practice right away and, you know, those techniques over and over and over again. Okay. So this is a board. Matter of fact, this had a little pattern of a scroll on it. I'm going to have to cover some of that up here. And I'm going to practice some of my colors. Now I'm going to use, I basically use uh, these brushes. You can see they've got color in them from my last painting because I paint a lot. I try to paint a couple of these little compositions every day. Now people say, oh, wow. Well, you know, I'm talking about an hour an hour in the morning or an hour in the evening. When you're all done, take your palette, open up your colors and set it out and paint a couple of compositional paintings. And in just a few weeks, your techniques and your abilities are gonna increase and you're gonna become a better artist because you're practicing. And that's, but you're not only practicing, you're creating a fun little painting. Let's do it. So this background that I have here, this is just a Heritage Multimedia. I've made this background color from a little white, a little yellow, and a little black. And uh, I've had some blue in this brush from the last painting, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that. I'm going to take down a little bit of, I'm going to first work on my, some of my colors. And I like to use these little compositional paintings to help me try out some different colors. Let's take a little blue. And one color I've been using here the last couple, this last week a lot is quinacridone violet. It's beautiful little violet color here. And I like to lean this just a little more to the violet side here. Matter of fact, let's take this right down here to this side. It's a beautiful, cool color. Okay, it's a violet. It's not a very powerful violet, not as powerful as the red violet that we have in our line. And uh, let me just grab a paper towel. I always have a paper towel in my hand here all the time to help me adjust color. It's uh, not quite as powerful as the red violet, darker red that we have in our line. And I'm going to add a little bit of my white here to this. Let's take a look at this. And I'm going to find a color. I don't want real purple, but I want to different kind of lavender type color here. That'll be kind of pretty. That's kind of a pretty color right in there. And let's drop some of this right into the background. And I'm gonna let this um, color, and this is where I, this is where it's fun to practice some of these different compositions. I can let that stay more powerful and see if I can develop a painting off of that, giving me different color schemes or different looks. Without having to paint a big painting, I'm gonna do it in the smaller version here first. I'm gonna put a little more blue into some of that right over here so I can get some color traveling. I like to just kind of push the color around here and try some different things here. So again, we'll put maybe a little bit of light, lighter color here on this side here. We'll pop some of this across here. That looks kind of nice. Kind of pretty colors going right through there. Sometimes you get these beautiful colors and you know, it's 
you don't want to cover them up with a rose or something because the colors get so pretty. But isn't that kind of pretty playing against the warm background here? Those are, that's kind of a, a pretty little look there. Now, let's uh, just kind of keep that there and let's put a little light. I like to put light to one side. That adds a, a little bit more visual interest, a light side to a cooler side or darker side there. Sometimes, let's just uh, add, I have a lot of violet into that background there. Let's add a little bit of our blue right down in here. So we pick up a spark of blue. And uh, I like that sometimes in my backgrounds just to change just a little bit. So you pick up that little spark of blue. And where does that come from? That comes from me looking at contemporary paintings where artists like to do that and then seeing if I can work that into a little floral. Okay, which we want to do. Now, in the book series and stuff that we have, I describe different ways, lots of different ways that I proceed from here. And and there's a couple of different ways that, you know, I can I can show you here in, in this particular painting, but there are several different ways that we use to harmonize the background now with our flowers. And that comes right to a technique just right now. So I have to make a decision. Sometimes I'll dry this up. Sometimes I'll tack it up. Um, and sometimes I'll use a thicker paint on top of this and paint into the wetter paint. There's a lot of different things that we talk about. One technique I'll use here today is since I have a lot of color that's on here, I'm going to spin off to take off some of my uh, that heavy color right here and push out just a little bit here where I might want to put my rose here. Take off some of this color, not all of it because I need some of it for harmony. And I'll soften the edges back into that. But I'll take off some of the major color so it's easy to paint a rose up into that area. Okay, so I'll wipe some of that off my hands. Now, I paint with all different kinds of brushes. But when I do these quick compositions, this is a number 10. You can tell I paint a lot with it. This one has done probably 200 paintings for me. It's lasts a long time. It's, um, and it's the Fusion Flat. And uh, what I'm going to do is just come in now and look for some colors. Now, I have a cool background. I have a warm back in through here. So since I'm surrounding this flower with a cool, I'm going to look to put a warm back up into this area here. So into that background, I have some yellow oxide. So I'm going to take some yellow oxide. This is how thick I usually like to keep my acrylics. And we control the heritage acrylics by, you know, how long we leave it open in a container like this. So I can make this real heavy, heavy acrylic color. I, I let some of the water evaporate out of it till it tightens up a little bit and, and manipulate it with some extender. And that we have all that information for you. And all that, of course, is in the book for you. But I'm going to make uh, some of this warm yellow with some of this red violet or this uh, quinacridone violet here. And it's going to make kind of a peach color. You see that there? Okay, and I'll use this peach color here. And I'm just going to start to set up the back, the back petals here of this rose. So let's set up about the size of the rose. So I'll put, sometimes you see me, I pull out like that. Sometimes I pull in. Sometimes I like to do what is a real lost edge to the back edge of the flower where you can't really find the edge there. And then sometimes I like to do, like on this one, a more definite edge here where you see that back uh, petal edge there. It, it's all a different look and we have all of those looks for you and you know, suggestions and how do you do all that. But I'm going to move the color in and out through the center this way. And I can come back in and, and define these edges a little bit more if I want to a little later. But I want the general paint to be moving in and out here of the center here, which is going to be coming in that way there. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to want to establish, so these would actually pull in. So everything is going to kind of radiate coming in here. I can take this, darken this down a little bit if you want, and you know, put in some more defined or definite petal back petal edges here if we want to do that to the rose like we did the other. So you see that edge, you know, this nice peach edge coming up against that blue. That's kind of pretty to, to leave that there. That's kind of nice. Now when we come into the center, we'll want to darken and cool our center. Uh, sometimes in, in these quick compositions, I do the center last which is opposite of what some of I've been doing with the Mastering Roses series. So the, the quick compositions, I have a bunch of different techniques that I do that. So sometimes I come with the centers and the darker colors last, and I show you that as well. Uh, this time I'm going to come with it right in the middle part of it here. And so we'll put in some cooler uh, of that quinacridone here. Now what I want to do is just spin it. I'm, looking, I'm not looking for petals, and too many people jump into painting petals too fast. I'm looking for movement. That's all I want to do. I've got thick color on here and see it just gives me this lovely spinning movement 
I'm also going to want to cool down the lower part of the rows here where it's going to be heading maybe into shadow. So I have this light that's showing up here where it's going to head to shadow. So I'm going to cool this lower part down and let it come right up into the warmer peach colors right up here like this. We'll just push out. Again, sometimes I pull in, sometimes I push out here. Now there's, you know, we can jump right up in here to our purples to make a darker color. Sometimes I'll use uh, the beautiful color here, the tone of burnt sienna, which is warmer. Maybe you add a little bit of that purple to that. It makes a beautiful color. There's also a, a red violet here that I add that makes a cool, a cool dark, but I don't always like it that cold, so I'll add a little burnt sienna to it. Something that's going to be a little darker, a little different color here that allows me to spin one more time a little, a little more dark and a little more contrast into the center of that rose I want to have. And maybe down here for where the bowl, the bottom edge of the bowl right down here would be in this rose and pull some across and up through like this. Just real casual movement. My brush is just barely touching the surface, applying some of that paint there. Now, a lot of times, you know, when you're setting up compositions, and I, I talk heavily about compositional painting, you know, into the book and stuff, and, and what we do is, you know, a, a, good, a, a good composition follows along the line of what botanical painters do is that we we paint the, the three stages of the rose. So here you'd have the adult, the juvenile, and the bud. Or and so you if you put something like that, you know, into a painting, or at least an adult and then a juvenile, you get a good look. And here I have an adult, a juvenile, and a suggestion of one into the back. There's all different kinds of ways and we talk about all of those. But I wanna I wanna suggest some of those. So let's come right down here. And let's just work a little bit cooler. Change the color down, burnt sienna and some and some uh, quinacridone. So we, we work on the cooler side. The lower side of our painting here is a little cooler. And we'll push some of this color right into some of this other background here. Some of it will get a little bit lost. And let's just make it, you're going to, to make a more juvenile rose, you're going to use the color a little bit more of an oval shape instead of a round shape. So we'll oval up here just a bit. And let's take even a little bit of that purple right into some of that. And we'll use that to help make a little darker color here. So this rose will be common to the quinacridone and a little burnt sienna. But it's going to be a little different tone. A little different. Which is going to make the rose pretty. And you know a lot of roses, especially as they mature up, change colors and and that's what they do and so you know as a as a compositional type of work if you include some of that you you get a better look to it let's go over here and uh, let's work on some of our bud too so our bud let's let's put a bud let's put a bud right up here and let's make it a little bit different as well let's get down and put some of that quinacridone and let's get a little blue into that maybe a little burnt sienna into that so our bud here will be a little different let's leave it a little darker right here like that. Let's put a little bud here. Let's lose the edges of it. So I just work that right into some of that wet background paint here. Sometimes I pull in like this, which loses the edge, and then I'll just soften that edge just a bit there. Okay, so I mean there's a bunch of different techniques. I'm just painting this one fast to show you how fast I normally paint and how fast I, I do create something. So if I'm creating a lost edge there, sometimes I'll come in and I'll just take my finger like that and fracture that edge there, or what we call it is uh, breaks the edge, broken color, what we call broken color. I'll use that on the edge of that one as well. Now, I have all of this purple that's right out through here too. So one of the colors that I want to incorporate into the rose is some of this purple and this violet color. This will create harmony into my painting. So I'll take some of that background just physically right into the painting. And right now, since I haven't done any of the petals or anything like that, I'm just looking at carrying the color. And you can see now just by doing a few touches of that, that color is carrying into the rose. Okay, so we've got a basic shape down. It's very casual, got a lot of refining to do on it, but we have an idea. Next thing I'll do is let's just take some green right over here. We'll just model that into some of this color, this little pine green here. We'll model that into some of this color. We'll set a couple of stems coming down this way. This is where I just take the chisel of the brush and I pull out and I'll work it back and forth here. Maybe uh, add a little one there or broken one that comes down this way here. Add a little bit for movement there, and then I'll take it and wipe it out just a bit and blur it out 
here. Uh, sometimes I use a little bit more burnt sienna, which is what I, I like to do on some of these flowers here, and you'll see me in, in these, and I'll add like little thorns, because you're usually used to seeing a little thorn or something like that. That's just a little, what I call a visual spark. It's a little spark of interest that uh, can go on to a, a stem or something like that, that just, see that little bit of color and stuff takes you right back down to there. And so it's something I like to do sometimes, especially if I'm gonna leave it open right down here without a lot of uh, um, uh, leaves or something like that, I might put that little visual spark in there. I then might uh, add a little more green to this and we'll come in and we'll put in just a, a few little bit of uh, ideas of leaves and stuff into here that we might want to have. Now, I'm not making leaves yet as much as I'm just imparting some greens into here where I might want to have some of those, some leaves showing up here. So we'll drop some in. Maybe we'll put a little leaf right out in here like this or just some green movement here. Some green movement out here like this. Just, and I like to let my brush kind of dance. So sometimes I'll just go like this and just put little sparks of color. This is one of the things that, you know, one, a lot of my students always say, wow, your brush can really dance. Well, I do hundreds of these little compositions like that, doing nothing but practicing that and getting my brush to work really, really fast. And this is one of the things, one of the elements that, you know, taking your, you know, working on little quick compositions like this gets you that type of practice, okay, of just letting that brush dance, is what I call the brush dance. Adding a little more yellow here to some of this color, working some of that color into here so I can get some, we want to get some variation to the colors of our leaves. We have blue into our background. We might want to get a little bit of blue, of that ultramarine blue here, out into some of our greens here and touch a little bit of that, you know, into a few of the leaves here. Variation of color is one of the things that adds tremendous interest to your painting. So as the artist, you want to get some of those variations uh, in there. So I'm going to clean my brush, wipe my color out of my brush, pinch wipe that out. Now we'll go in and we'll start to build. Now we want to build a rose. We have to decide if we want to build petals or not. And there's, again, lots of different techniques I use to do that. But I want to keep the warmer color coming forward here. So I'll come right back up here to where my yellow was. Uh, I don't care if that greens in it a little bit. That doesn't hurt it at all. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow, warm that right up into here. Let's go grab some white. Let's drop that into that area and let's start into some first. We'll find we'll work back to the the violet all the way up here to the uh, to the yellow here. We'll find some, a nice light color here that gets a little warm, so it's a little heavier on the warm. Maybe a little peachy color here that I like. I might work this peach color to a yellow. I'm gonna come right up to the front of the flower and this is where I'm gonna to start to build. And I just kind of curve the stroke a little bit so I can give you the movement of the bowl. You're not painting petals. You're painting the movement here of the bowl. So I want this light color to come down. I want this light color to fade on this side because I'm heading to that shadow. And I want this light color to be a little bit more, maybe a little warmer, a little more yellow up onto this side up here as I come around. That builds that side of the bowl of that part of the rose there. Let's uh, deposit a little bit of that warm color right out through here. These are not petals, and what I'm doing is just putting in some warmth to the, to the rose. So I kind of dance that. I know underneath here is a shadow color, so if I wipe my brush like this, and I can do what I call lift off or negative paint here and bring back some of the bowl shadow that's underneath just by lifting off a little bit of that light color that I had there, just a few, and I just deposited there. I know that shadow's underneath, so I can keep that, that shadow underneath. So sometimes I wipe, that's why I paint with this brush. I wipe with this brush, I take off, and then it allows me to do, to manipulate the color around. Now, so I have this light coming here. I know in the very front part of this rose, I really want it to advance. So I'm gonna step up the lightness here just a bit more here. And let's just come out here like this and set some thick paint out here onto the rose, right there like that. We'll set up a little bit more here. We'll wipe that brush. Let's drop down, put a little bit of the cooler color in there, and then we'll take some of it out. And I'll just wipe the brush right into the cool again and take some of that out there like that. So I'll leave in that nice light 
Tip Terry, this is just one of hundred techniques I use, hundreds of techniques I use to paint roses. But I know that uh, I can use that cool color to lift off, and so I leave light little tips. That's just one way. It makes it look kind of neat there. Um, I'm going to come down, and I'm going to let this kind of kind of tack up just a little bit. And I feel the surface of the rose all the time. I'm going to let that tack up just a bit. And let's come down here, and let's put a little bit of that warm, just a little bit warm, not quite as warm, just a little bit warm. So I'm down here mostly in my, in my cooler. Here's my warm, here's my cooler. I'm right down here towards the cooler side, putting in a little bit more light, but you see a little bit of that yellow. And we'll build the, the what we're doing here is just kind of stroking on the roundness that we want to this bowl. Here's the roundness here. Now, I don't want to paint a small rose. I want to keep this kind of ovaled up. I want to paint a, a juvenile rose, which is more oval shape here. So I've got to oval this just a bit more here like that okay and let's put a, a bit of the light tone right up here where that's going to be and then we'll let this just kind of fade around well i'm going to let this be very lost back here under the back edges like that so sometimes i paint pretty heavy sometimes very lost let's take a little bit of that up here and we'll work on that bud just and see how quickly i'll just kind of simulate what that bud where that bud's going to be some of the petals it doesn't take too many strokes i'm just pulling down here it doesn't take too much to really say hey that looks like a bud because the viewer will paint it if i paint this as a rose their eyes going to see that as a bud and really if you really want to see a bud Let's take a, a little, a real cool color like a red violet here with a little bit of our burnt sienna. If you really want to see a bud, just drag the shadow down one side. Kind of curve a, a shadow up at the top up here like this. And then just drag it down one side and just kind of shadow this bottom side of this right here. So that you leave at least one imaginary petal up there like that. And there you get a bud. You get a, a very quick impressionistic bud shape really really fast here without having to do too much to uh, you know to a rose to a flower and you want to leave that kind of understated like that that's the important part of it but i'm going to want to have I, I feel like i'm still heavy in color here so i'm going to want to have this a little bit lighter right up in here we'll do that but let me take a little bit of that cool color right down here and generate a little shadow side to this one down here and blur it out a little bit i don't want I'm going to do this a little different in that I want this flower to be a little more lost. So I do a lot of lost edge painting, impressionistic type paintings. And um, we're going to want this little flower here more juvenile, so it'll be a little bit bigger here. Just up, just a little bit in size from that bud that's up there like that. So, okay, that starts that. Let's take a little bit of that cool color. We'll restate our, our cool color up onto this side here. Pull that out right into that green. Doesn't hurt it. You know, I talk a lot about painting transparently. If I paint tr something transparently, I take it in and out. You know, I move colors in and out with those greens and stuff like that. And that helps me get transparent petals. I show all of that for you in our, in our educational stuff. So in the books and videos. But uh, we'll pull across here like this. Okay. Now I'll keep right up in here into my warm area. And I really like that a real warm kind of peach color a little bit. So I'm going to stay to the peach just a little bit here. And we're going to lighten up. I'm going to lighten up this color to, and find the color to the front of that rose that I really want as I go all the way to white. And I'm probably going to set the white over here so I have a pure color with just a little bit of that color here. So I'm going to, I want to go to a real light color. This has the yellow. It's a little warm into it. This will allow me to build just a little bit more here, around like that. Uh, I might turn a couple of petals here, just a few strokes to close off that edge of the bowl. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I touch a little bit of this uh, color into the center just to increase that. And all I want is this rounding movement. I don't want to go in there and make a whole bunch of petals. I just want a rounding movement in there. Okay. Let's uh, let's start getting a little more white here, up into the white, up into the very front of this rose here. So you see I'm striking now a lot of color, and I can strike this color pretty heavy, 
put that pedal on and just kind of stroke very lightly around like this, kind of round that, round that shape down like that. I'll wipe my brush here a bit. Sometimes I'll pull through to, to, uh, to soften that out. Now, underneath all that, because I haven't pressed, underneath all that is still the shadow. And I can lift that, this shadow right back up into that flower again and leave just the white only where I want it. Or I can pull it down and soften the whole bottom part of that rose like that. So I can control a lot of things there on that rose. A lot of the, the look of that rose, I can still control a lot. Now, I'm going to put more of an edge out here onto these. And I'll wipe to, to take some of that off. Pull out. This is just one of the many techniques that I use. I'm going to push more of an edge onto this one here. Some people really like their roses to have that nice, powerful edge to the top. That's how I do it. I just roll the brush over onto the edge here, and I make more of an edge. So I make more of a petal edge like that, coming around that rose like that. Okay. And uh, let's, let's work this again right in through here, a little bit more light, because I want the front of the rose to be very light coming forward. So I'm just going to work a little more light. Notice I'm pulling across the rose instead of in and out all the time. I can control that. If you're always going in and out, in and out, in and out, the rose petal is going to become stiff. So I, a lot of times I stroke one way across it and then pull and lift color back out or pull in and out at, at a different direction. And so that gives me two looks to the petal and that makes the petal, uh, the movement of the petal more casual like you see right in there right now. It's more casual. I can come back in at any time with a little bit of that peach color and reset the bottom of that bowl of that rose in there if I want and, and pull some of this color back down and I'm looking for this mo this movement and this is what I want to get is all this modeled movement as I build this rose that's what it's all this modeled movement in there that makes these roses so pretty and it takes a little bit of back and forth sometimes to get those colors in there the way we want to have them so and then I might even take just a a warm yellow let's just take white and a little yellow here together and I, I like to I don't like to paint with pure white I either like to paint with it cool or warm and so I'll put a little bit of the warmer color right in here right onto that one right there that looks nice come in there and let's build up this petal right here a little bit let it fade away let's put more of it so I'll pick up the this is another technique I use I'll pick up the color on the edge like this this allows me to edge the petals here to draw in smaller little petals. Since I have the movement there, I don't need anything but little edges there to show like little petals there. So I just I just pick up just the edge right on the chisel like that. And I can use that to uh, come in and draw petals or, or put another the look of another petal in there. And, uh, you know, it's so it's really once you have the movement. So I'm, I paint for movement. That's what I do is I paint for movement. And then uh, let me just come in and chisel in another petal in there. I'll show you. I'll just chisel in another petal right in there like that. Or I kind of flattened it out there a bit. But I'll just pull out like this and let that shadow come back in. And that gives this nice, lovely movement to that edge of that petal right there. Really pretty. And uh, so I can chisel to make small ones. I can flatten down. I can take my light white and yellow here. We can go bang right across the front like that to really get a nice light petal right up in there to the front and pull out just wipe my brush and just pull out a little bit set my brush barely touching the surface and just pull out and that gives me those streaks and movements to the to the petal of the rose there and let's just touch a little bit more light right in there like that I kind of want to keep that bowl there so I'm just going to lift some of that back out and sometimes in the lifting out you go wow that's kind of a fun looking little petal there we might leave that and just reset that just again right in there like that that's kind of pretty a little different shape to that but this is what I do back and forth with it manipulating the thick paint that's getting on there right now now sometimes though the, the if you're not used to painting with the hair it is like this in this thick application you feel like you have no control and so the easiest way to do this, like I said in the techniques book, is go over there, just put it under a warm hair dryer for just a couple minutes, let this paint that's on the surface tack up or tighten up, then come back and paint into it, then you have a lot of control. You can still lift off, you can still push, but the paint is a little tighter and then easier to use. If you get the colors too wet, 
too loose. It's hard to do. And this is one things where painting quick compositions like this really work because they get you, they get you to practice and practice and practice the the consistency of the paint and the key to painting anything is the consistency of the paint. Now you can't always use my consistency because your hand is different. All of our hands are different and every artist out there has to find the consistency of a paint that works with the pressure of their hand. Okay and so by using these quick compositions like this you can practice that. Let's take just a tiny bit of that warm light and let's just let's just put on the edge here of that's a, just a little rosebud back there. Let's take a little chisel edge of it here and let's just give a little chisel edge to maybe the petal there. Maybe there's another little chiseled petal, petal that hits right there. So we'll have that one. Maybe it cuts across the front of this one just a bit. Just a little bit more. You know, it's, it's just beginning to open up. So we'll have that. And let's build this front of this one a little more here around. Not done with that other rose yet, but I'm just letting it tack up just a bit. We'll uh, use, uh, I'll come in and I'll push a little lighter edge here. So we'll let this edge of this rose sit on top of the big one here. So we'll push that other rose behind this one here. And that gets into composition, which one, sometimes you don't want to make your, your main center of interest rose just all sit up on top. So burying a corner of it behind another one here is a good idea. Pick up and just chisel in the edge of a petal right there like that. See, I don't have to do too much to that petal because I already have the movement established in there. All I need to do is put a little light at the edge of that petal there and, and suggest the edge of that petal. And let's suggest the edge of a petal right here, coming right in there like that. Since I have kind of a, a lot of color and light and stroke built on that, we'll build these ones up just a bit so they'll carry that same look to the rose just not as not as big not as busy here let's uh, carry that light out onto this one a bit we'll let some of these edges just kind of fade away here just soft edges this is where I'll paint this right out into the green like that let some of that green show through and there's where you can get some of your transparency just take the edge of your brush and a little bit of paint you already have the movement in here now we just want to put in to, and I'll cool that down just a bit. We want to put in just a little sparks of the edges of these back petals. So just a little bit of color here. More red violet or quinacridone there. Change the color up a bit. You can restate some of that shadow pulling in this way if you want to have some more light dark contrast in your rows. Or you can set some of that light right in here so it's soft. You can you control that you control the look of the rose and and uh, you know each of the the books I do have you know at least ten different types of compositions for you to practice to show you how some of those go and then we have lots and lots of them they see I'll just soften that up and I so I built that all up there like that I want to build just a little more warm light white up here into the very front of this rose here. And I want to preserve some of that movement there, these out, these petals to the outside here. So I, I just went into that a little bit more than I want to. I like the, the, the casualness of it, but I'll just lift off some of that just into a little jagged edge like that. Just so I keep that rose movement and it'll look like petals. Now we can come in, if you like stroke petals and stuff, you can come in and stroke these a little bit more like that. So that you get the look of a stroke rose petal or something like that, you can do that. Just, you know, you pick up just a little bit of the paint like that on the edge and you just stroke the edge like that and you'll get that little stroke rose. That's up to you. That's, you know, and I'll do each painting a little different. I'll fold petals and do what I call weave petals together. There's a whole technique called that. And we've talked about that in other books. But I'll just make a few little sparks here, movement. Go back and let's um, set my quinacridone right back up into here like that. So you have that. Now I'll just take a couple of sparks of some uh, brighter green here of a lighter yellow green. I like some of the darks that I have there, but let's just, you know, sometimes I'll leave the, the darker greens to play against the leaves, but sometimes I play against the flowers. Sometimes I'll put in a, you know, a lighter yellow green or something like that, or a blue green would look real pretty in this as well. Picking up the blue from the, uh, the other uh, 
leaves and stuff here. So let's just put a little little bit of blue green into that. That's it picks up the blue from the other part of the blue background and stuff. That's pretty. You can put in a little warmer yellow green. I'm just going to leave these little blue greens, maybe a little yellow green. And but this is what's nice is you're painting a small little painting and now you have to check all the little colors out of the painting, you know. Are you going to do it or not or you know what are you going to do? you know, for your colors, but you get to plan and practice your colors, which in a big painting, you might, uh, you know, you might not be doing that for a week. Now I'm getting doing it in 30 minutes here, and then you turn around and, uh, you know, you can um, paint another one, practice another little, you know, color concept or something like that. And from this point on, you determine the, the movement to the rows, how much you want to have, you know, how much light that you want to do in there. And then when you're all said and done with this, you know, how big you, you want to shape up your leaves a little bit like this? Do you want to put in more shapes? Do you want to do different colors and everything? I always like to practice all different kinds of looks and stuff. Then you're all done. You put it into a nice little frame. Sometimes towards the end of the painting, I'll put it into a little frame and see if it needs anything more. You know, does it need a few little uh, touches of some other accent greens, you know, coming out this way or something like that? Just to help the viewer's eye move out and, and everything over to... To other objects and stuff these little touches just really help and add interest out there you can do some um, I'll take a little bit of this darker color here even a little purpley color into that you can do there's other techniques I use again lots of them this is one I, I show quite heavily in the techniques book of negative painting into a shape back here uh, which will drive some of the interest to that side but not drive it away from the light here and there's a lot of rules with that, so you have to be kind of careful where you negative paint. But we'll talk we we'll talk quite a bit about that in some of the, the lessons that we have here. And negative painting, put some of that in. Just drop some of that out to there like that. You got a fun little painting. And you got a fun little painting in 30 minutes, a little bit more because I talked a lot. Yeah, just a little bit more because I talked a little bit more. But um, anyway, you have that there and you're allowed to practice that. Now, one of the things too is I'm carrying this red vine and you see the violet colors coming back into the flowers here. So you're seeing my background expressed into here. Sometimes into a painting, you don't have that. So sometimes into a painting, I might express, you know, take a blue and I might express it out into the into part edge of a flower or something like that. Always make sure that your background incorporates into your painting someplace that you, you're going to see that that background incorporating into the painting and um, uh, that's the other advice that I have for you always harmonize that paint the background with your painting so I physically like I did I touched into here a little bit but you might want to you know take a little bit of that and just touch into that that you know but here with the colors that I picked here this time you can see it pretty well inside there make sure you always see your background inside your painting then you get a, a better harmony between the object and its background okay thanks very much for joining me I hope you enjoy that don't forget to go check out um, you know, the, click the link there to go over and see some where that book is and where some of those quick compositions are. We're going to add a lot of them. I have them on landscapes and and uh, we're doing seascapes with them. We're going to do a lot of different types of compositions with them because I am a firm believer in these quick little paintings like this that force you to use the whole concepts of, of all of the mastery of the color of the warms and the cools and the lights and the darks and harmonizing with your background. You run through all of the rules all in about 30 minutes to an hour and you then go back and repeat it again and repeat it again and pretty soon you got stacks of these fun little paintings like I have here uh, but they're nice and they, and they frame up really really nice and they look really really nice into a frame and stuff so and you gives you a chance to practice all of those different types of color compositions all right and that's the key practice those color compositions and try different things and teach your eye to see things different all right I'll see you on some of the other videos hope you enjoyed it and as always you can uh, contact us at the Jansen Art Studio AOL.com if you have any kinds of questions or anything like that. And I'll see you on the other videos. Take care. Bye-bye.